DJ, lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is the third film in the franchise. So when they approached you and went, do you want to do this? What were your initial thoughts? Well, my initial thoughts were, okay, why should I be the guy to do this? And (laughs) and if I have to sort of follow these other two movies, what can I bring to it? But, you know, I love the character of Xander Cage so much. He was this rebel, like, who became a patriot, and he just kind of had his own coda and his own creed. So I thought, in today's day and age, to bring that action hero kind of back 15 years later, I think the timing for it was right. So for me, once I accepted that I, lo- I want to bring this character back, how can I get action to sort of elevate action into a whole nother level because Xander Cage allows you to do that? Then it became an exciting proposition. Yeah, well, you did elevate it to yes. a whole nother <laughs> level. I'm watching it just going, and how did that happen? And how did that happen? How do you prepare for something like this? Because I'm sure you can see it in your mind. Mm-hmm. But how do you actually execute it? Well, I think I think part of the execution is realizing that there are some people out there that really do ski when there's no snow and do ride motorcycles. So we went to, you kind of go to the experts and say, like, can we do this on film? Can we do this in a sequence? Is what I'm seeing on YouTube real or is this all <laughs> bullshit? Um, so you kind of look at that and you go from a realistic point of view of how to execute it, storyboard it, build it together with the stunt coordinator, and then just go, all right, let our imagination go crazy. Were there ever any days, though, where you woke up and went, oh? Yeah, there was. There was quite a few days in the Dominican Republic where we were having the motorcycles on the water because it started on very calm water. So that was true. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Robbie Madison came up with that, this uh, Australian stuntman who's phenomenal, great, great motorcycle rider, kind of like an Evil Knievel guy. So... We had the calm water and it was all working out pretty good, but as soon as we got out towards the surf, uh, concept or, or, or what we thought would happen with the bikes didn't really happen. The, the waves just kept beating them up and the stuntman kept sinking and going to the bottom. And so uh, that was the day you kind of like, when it's not working, where you kind of just take a deep breath and just go, all right, let's get, let's get this together. Yeah. Um, what I loved about this film was the international cast. Yeah. How did you go about casting everyone? Did you have them in mind or did you throw up? We did have them in mind. We were fortunate enough to kind of start from this script from scratch. And so Scott Frazier and I, the writer, kind of worked together and sort of knew, like, we want to get like a Donnie Yen. We were, you know, I had been sort of like chasing Ruby Rose for about a year to get in a movie. So we kind of wrote for Adele for Ruby Rose. And then I had seen Deepika's audition for another movie uh, that she did with Vin, was auditioning with Vin. So then we kind of put it together and like sort of fantasized about how can we get all these people. Uh, so from the, from the concept, it was, it was um, what we wanted to do. And, and it's global because I think, uh, first of all, the world's changing, the world is shrinking, it's much smaller. And American action movies are no longer American action movies, they're global, so we mm-hmm. thought, why not, why not catch up with the times and, 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 and capitalize? Michael Bisping was amazing, yeah. but you originally wrote it for Conor McGregor. Yes. How disappointed were you when he said no? You know, I wasn't disappointed, I was really pissed, because uh, Conor had said yes, he was gonna do the movie, he went and got his ass kicked by Nate Diaz, and then after that, he kind of like, sort of backed out, but didn't back out, and then, uh, we kind of went, you know, we liked Michael Bisping from the, from the onset, and so we basically reached back out to him and got him. But uh, I think it all works out for, for great reasons. And then, uh, you know, to have Michael become the world champion, you know, while you're, while you're kind of getting to know him. Literally, there was two weeks left in shooting, and he came up to me and said, I'm going to be fighting for the, the champ. And I was kind of laughing, and I took the donut and the coffee out of his hands and said, if you're going to be <laughs> fighting for the world championship, you've got to be training. And so it all worked out great because Michael was a gift. I know you can't trust the internet, right? But right. on your IMDb page, yes. it has rumoured director, G.I. Joe 3. Is that what it says? Mm. Oh. Is it true? Is it false? <laughs> Who's putting it up there? Well, we'll see, because I'd met with Dwayne uh, before I started this movie, and so we're talking about it, we're developing it, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, well, very exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not going to give anything away, but I can say that, yes. you know, this could lead to possibly another film. Yeah, I think so. Would you be behind that? Oh, I would be behind it because we, you know, if you saw the film when you did, it's a fun movie. We had that much fun making it. So whenever you have that much fun making it and and I think, you know, you come out with a product that we did, of of course I'd get back on there again. And maybe write Conor McGregor into that one because he's Uh, on a high now. Well, uh, yeah, we have an idea to to kind of, we have a, we have an idea to kind of write Conor McGregor into that one. Brilliant. Well, we're looking (laughs) forward to that. DJ, such a pleasure speaking to you. Nice to pleasure. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much.